Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is part two of the series where I talk about how to answer behavioral questions in data science interviews and share my detailed answers, which I personally used in tons of interviews successfully. So in part one, I have shared 10 questions as well and a lot of tips and tricks. And if you haven't watched it yet, you will find the link in the de description in part one. I talked about a lot of questions like tell me about yourself, current responsibilities, time you failed, shifting, career goals, what can you bring to the table, how to handle difficult situations, you know, how you how you were in a, a leader in a group setting, biggest weakness, etc. So these were the top 10 questions that I talked about. In this part two, we are going to go over 10 more questions with include you know, how do you define success of a project? How do you influence and manage change time when you had to implement last minute change and had to be successful, how to handle conflict in a team? What will you do if you are unable to meet a deadline, how to get non responsive coworkers to respond? What do you consider your greatest achievement? Then I also talk about three bonus questions like why do you want to be a data science consultant? And when people ask like why this company, right? So I will be giving two examples, the answers that I gave to BCG and Amazon Whole Foods and successfully cleared that round. Why did you choose our company over other com competitors? So in this section, I will be talking about why BCG over other consultancies and how I answered that, you know, to proceed to round two. Okay, so let's jump right in and start one by one. So how do you define success of a project, right? So what I answer is I always start with, you know, I always work on a project charter where I clear clearly lay out the objective assumptions, scope, key results and takeaways of a project by discussing it with stakeholders. So you see, like I'm trying to demonstrate that Yes, I know that for a project to be successful, firstly, to clearly lay out the objective, talk to the stakeholders, what they want, what is the key result that they want? Is there any assumptions involved? What is in scope? What is not in scope? And trying to lay out clearly right from the very beginning is very important. You know, it gives a perspective that yes, this person is a leader who is enthusiastic about, you know, making this project a success right from the very beginning. I also go ahead and add, I make sure that we achieve those key results and properly communicate the insights or turnkey solutions if they are involved. So what I'm trying to say here is that I not only plan to, you know, complete the project, but I make sure that I am able to properly communicate the insights or whatever results that were, you know, generated from the project. If there are any turnkey solutions involved, I, you know, share them, how to use them, what you need to change. If these certain kind of errors or scenarios arrive, what do you do in that cases, etc. So you see, I am not only demonstrating that the project is important, but also communicating at the end, handing over the project so that even if you are not working on the project, after some time, the person, the stakeholders can use it in even in your absence. So, right. So this is very important, a rare skill that you're trying to demonstrate. I also see it as a success if I or my team learn something in the process. So I'm also trying to demonstrate that, yes, not only the project success, but also my individual learning or the team's individual learning is a key aspect and a pillar in considering something as a success for me. So it demonstrates that if you are, you know, trying to learn something in the process, you will be enthusiastic. You will be, you know, going above and beyond to find different ways around the problems that arises during a long project, right? So it is very important to, you know, keep these things in mind while answering such questions. Okay, so let's move forward to next question. How do you influence and manage change, right? So now in these, in this kind of question, what I do is change can be of two types, right? Either you are being affected because of a change or because of you, a change is happening, right? So I break this entire thing into two different pieces. So I start with, if a change is happening and I am being affected, 
I try to be flexible, dependable and adaptable during the phase of transition because everyone during the phase of transition expects that other team members or other people around are flexible and dependable. If let's say someone is leaving the team, right? So the projects he or she might be working on might be deliberated to you. So you need to be flexible. You need to be dependable that yes, if the person is deliber uh, deliberated this project, he or she will complete it in time. He or she is adaptable during this phase of transition. You so I properly list down how to go about this change and try to find out it if, if anything new is required from my end. So you not only just sit there and watch the transition, but also try to make the process smoother by trying to, you know, so that enthusiasm that yes, I list down what things might change. And even if even I offer to help, right, if anything is required from my end, I will be, uh, you know, happy to help. So demonstrate that. And then I also go ahead and mention that if a change is happening because of me, I try to list and properly convey why the change is important, what exactly will change what the stakeholders expect and try to be as approachable and helpful as I can, right? So it is just like if someone is leaving and you are, you know, being deliberated a project, let's say you are leaving or there is a change because of you, then the same feeling is for other members as well, right? So in that case, you need to properly tell that, okay, this is what is happening. This is, these are the specific things that are going to change because you need to think in a way that you might be working on a project for a year. And if you, and it is very difficult for someone else to just take over it in a day and understand the, uh, you know, nitty gritties of the project in like one day or two day, right? So it is very difficult. So you need to be very clear at that moment, tell them, make them see, uh, you know, and make the task easier for them. Let them know what the stakeholders expect and try to be approachable and helpful. So a lot of times uh, interviewers ask this just to see that if something like this happens, how do we handle the situations, right? So make sure you tell them the both sides of the coin, right? Okay, moving forward. Tell me about a time when you had to implement any last minute change and have to be successful, right? So again, this is a tell me about a times of situational question. So the best way to answer this is a star method. So I let them know. So while I was working on an automation project, a last minute change in one of the future features was requested by senior leadership, right? Then tell that the task that I understood was despite this request, the automation tool was scheduled to be launched in three weeks. And my task was to incorporate that change in a timely fashion because the tool launch cannot be delayed. Right? So after setting this premise that this was the situation and this was the task at hand, I always try to, you know, make them see what is the actual action that I took. And in these kind of questions, right? So when you had to implement last minute change, etc. So what I think the person is trying to see here is, are you, you know, when you start doing something or as a data scientist, these kind of changes can can be you know very often right because you might be doing some experiment and then you realize oh uh, there is another table which has a better you know information about whatever data you collected so you need to change your like change some things of your analysis right so you need to be always ready in this job role so are you a person who keeps all this in the mind even from the very beginning. So that is what, you know, I try to demonstrate. Since I was developing this application in three different layers from the starting, the design layer, application layer, and the data layers, I was already prepared for such changes. So right, last minute changes are very difficult to do. So if you demonstrate that you are already, you know, in such a position that you can incorporate any last minute changes without you know going to change the entire skeleton of your project so that is very important that that demonstrates to the interviewer that yes this person knows what it takes to be a data scientist and knows what you know changes can be uh, occurring on a day-to-day -day basis so I reached out to people who had similar experiences with the features and implemented it using their help. 
now again it since it is a last minute change if you you know just try to demonstrate yourself as a superhuman that yes someone said this and even if there was a time crunch i did everything by myself no they are not trying to test that that are you a superhuman they are trying to see that if you are cornered or if you are put in a situation then do you ask to collaborate are you collaborative in nature do you ask for help do you know what right are the right questions to ask or do you you know crumble under pressure so try to demonstrate that yes if you take help and a person who has you know uh, incorporated similar kind of features in other tools that they might have worked on it is very easy to you know bypass all the things that might take unnecessary time for you right and there is a time crunch in this situation so try to demonstrate that and as a result the tool was launched on time and it was and it received a great response from stakeholders that yes it was indeed helpful okay so let's move forward how do you handle conflict in a team right again this is basically a situational question so instead of you know just telling uh, things giving an example and showing them what you actually did when there was a conflict in a team is much better way of answering these kind of questions so in a situation in one of my internship we were four interns in a team two members had two different opinions of how to start approaching the project and you see since the, i mentioned that this is an internship internships are usually like one month two month three month in so there is a time crunch as well the person gets that right from the beginning so my task was to trying to handle the conflict so that the project does not get off track because there is a time limit and since even if we need to work for two months the environment doesn't like shouldn't become acrimonious or you know bad to work where people don't feel motivated to come and work right because internships are a great way to learn things right when you especially when you don't have experience in that domain so this was my task in hand and what actions did i take like straight to the point i scheduled a meeting with all the members asked each of the members as to why they think their idea is a better approach if that idea is not explored what might we miss right so basically here when there is a conflict so usually why why a conflict occurs in like between two people or two organizations or whatever right why a conflict occurs one of the most important thing is that the person thinks that his or her idea or his or her thinking is better than or is the only uh, correct solution here but i try to make sure that the person or the interviewer knows that i know this like why conflict occurs and i make the other person see that why the other why like why the first person's idea is good or what might we miss so when both the people tell about this right so the other person is able to see okay yes this is correct if we don't do this we are going to miss this, right so you see you go towards harmony by making them understand each other's point and since uh, like there were four members i was acting as a leader there was a conflict between two team two members so i even you know go ahead and include the fourth member right so fourth member is basically a neutral bystander so from a neutral standpoint what are his thoughts on both the sides right so trying to incorporate all the members of the team to solve a conflict like don't you know answer these kind of questions that okay in a 10 member team to there was a conflict between two people so i handle everything and the rest uh, members of the team were just sitting and watching obviously not like when there is a conflict everyone will pitch in right everyone will try to make sure that this conflict does not off track your project right because everyone is there to learn everyone is a equal at that position right so as a result it turned out actually both approaches were important for the objective and we ended up including both of them so it is not only you know good for the members for the environment it is also good for the project that yes people are thinking from different aspects and if both aspects are complementing each other why not include both get let the stakeholder get a better solution rather than a half solution right moving forward what will you do if you are unable to meet the deadline right so in these kind of questions what the interviewer tries to see is that whether you are a person who waits 
टिल यू आर अनेबल टू यू नो मीट अ डेड लाइन एंड यू नो बेसिकली मेक फे फॉल्स प्रोमिस और यू आर लाइक टू द पॉइंट ऑनेस्ट राइट फ्रॉम द वेरी बिगनिंग सो मेक श्योर दैट द सी दैट येस यू आर ऑनेस्ट राइट फ्रॉम द वेरी बिगनिंग सो रिसेंटली आई वॉज वर्किंग ऑन अ मेजर प्रोजेक्ट एंड गॉड डेलीबरेटेड अनदर प्रोजेक्ट विथ एन अप्रोचिंग डेड लाइन आई न्यू आई वॉन्ट बी एबल टू मीट द डेड लाइन this lines make sure that you know the interviewer knows that yes this is a person who knows what his or her current workload is and will he or she be able to work on any you know approaching deadlines or any approaching project this gives the interviewer an idea that yes this this interviewee is a person who is aware he is not blindly working on some projects and just takes you know takes whatever comes his way or even if he is free he does not say something he is aware about his situation and if something comes he does not say no to it but he knows that yes if i am not able to complete it i will tell the person so i also laid down the extent to which i may complete the task or i will be able to complete the task and schedule regular che- checkpoints till the deadline to make sure i am working on the most important aspects first right again so since there is a approaching deadline there is a time crunch and i am not saying no to it but i also have very little time because of the other project that i am working on so to make sure that whatever time i am left with i utilize it properly how do i do it right so make sure the interviewer sees this that yes with the little amount of time even in that little amount of time he is thinking that okay yeah uh i i know how to complete the task i will schedule regular checkpoints so that i am not off track the project you clear constantly discuss with the stakeholders so that you only you know start with the most important aspects first right because there is an approaching deadline right so you make them see that i also asked the stakeholders for some extra time well in advance and told them that i will be able to complete the project given the extra time so right from the very beginning be upfront let the stakeholders know and don't make any false promises let them know that if they are expecting that i will be doing the like i will be completing the entire project with the current deadline it is not possible for me and these are the reasons because uh, you know you are involved somewhere but yes these are the things which you can do you think you can do and the and let's start with the most important aspects first and ask for the extra time moving forward how do you get non responsive coworkers to respond to you right so again non responsive coworkers they are not responding to you how to you know get response from them so again instead of preaching few things give an example giving example in these situational questions is one of the best thing i like i'm just you know making this absolutely clear by repeating this that give examples from your life right so in my undergrad i remember i was in a team of four people working on the final year project one member was preparing for some competitive exams and was not very involved in the project right from the starting right so you 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 know you again demonstrate that yes you are a leader you are seeing that who is you know involved in the project who is not that much involved and right when you see that there is a problem you act so right away i talked to the person and inquired about his reasons to be non responsive you know friendly ask like why why is there any problem he doesn't like the project or is there is something wrong with other members or like whatever whatever the reasons are so based on that i made him see the benefit of the project that we are working on how this can be helpful for him as well and also took into account his schedule so that it does not hinder his preparations obviously you know if a person is doing something you need to make sure that whatever you are incorporating does not hinder it right so to you make them see the benefit you make them you know trust uh, trust you tell them that how this can be helpful for them and also keep in mind their schedule is like you know trying to uh, tackle this 
प्रॉब्लम इन अ थ्री सिक्सटी डिग्री वे राइट सो दिस डेवलप ट्रस्ट एंड फाइनली द पर्सन इवन स्टार्टेड ब्रिंगिंग आउट आइडियाज फॉर कंप्लीटिंग द प्रोजेक्ट एज अर्ली एज पॉसिबल यू नो बिकॉज द पर्सन गॉट मोटिवेटेड दैट येस इट इज नॉट ओनली बेनिफिशियल बट दैट इज फाइड दैट ओके इफ वी कैन यू नो इंस्टेड ऑफ टेकिंग द होल ईयर इफ वी कैन फिनिश दिस इन लेट से एट मंथ्स he will be getting 4 months to like prepare for things uninterrupted right so that is the kind of motivation that you want from the people right because such kind of things can happen like especially once you become a leader such kind of things can happen maybe there are some people who are not very responsive or like they reply only when you ask a question they are not super responsive to you or you know they don't take the initiative etc so how do we handle this are you just going ahead and complaining to other people that oh this person is not responsive or do you really try to understand the situation the problem and try to come up with solutions again very data science oriented thing right moving ahead what do you consider your greatest achievement uh, again like you can uh, say whatever but whenever since you are like be mindful that you are in a, uh, you know in a data science interview so something that is aligned with that would be a great example and when you say greatest achievement tell them exactly why you think it is one of the greatest achievement in your life right you just don't say that yeah this is was my great achievement make and focus and let them see that yes this is a great achievement and it is indeed a great achievement because of these and these reasons right so in one of the internships i recently completed my custom algorithm was able to save more than 100000 dollars worth of mt flying for the organization in 3 months this i believe to be one of my greatest achievement because we all know how bad the airline industry was hit due to covid right everyone will share this sentiment to add on i was working with small private charter operators who don't enjoy economies of scale like big airlines and my solution is a way provided in a way provided them the boost they were looking for after such a period like 2 years of covid so you see you are making them see that you are not only quantifying your achievement but also making them see the situation that was there and why it, you are considering it a great achievement because you know that you have helped the business to you know regain its path i truly experienced how powerful data science and optimization skills are while working on the project so you don't need to be, get too technical or too you know uh, into data science stuff because the question is what do you consider your greatest achievement but yeah in the way if you answer it in this way or a similar way the interviewer is bound to have like ask you the next uh, question okay so what did you do to you know achieve this or whatever right so you see again driving your interview and making the interviewer ask what you want them to ask right so it is a very great way of you know trying to steer your interview in a way that you like okay let's go through the bonus questions right so why do you want to be a data science consultant right again whenever you whenever people ask you about a certain role right so why do you want to be a data scientist why do you want to be a software engineer make them see the points that you are and like be very structured that you know and your priorities are set and you are looking for some things and you think that whatever your reasons are whatever you are looking for whatever your desires are can only be fulfilled by this Uh, opportunity or this role right make them see that there is an alignment between what you want and the role that you are applying to right for example for data science consultant right so i love to solve big business problems and have a wide impact one of my priorities is to get get exposed to senior leadership early in my career because i believe that will help me to learn from their experience and know how they think you see how i am aligning what i want and these are the things that when you are a data science consultant or when you are a consultant in a team these are the things that you will be exposed to or these are the benefits that you will get so the one trick here is whatever the benefits of the job if you can align it to what your current priorities are that is a great match and a great fit between 
uh, you and your desires and the job requirements right i enjoy the diversity and novelty of solving business problems across multiple different industries again very classic example of being a consultant i enjoy working with bright extraordinary people i believe consulting is one of the best way to develop technical and soft skills simultaneously and i believe a career in consulting best suits my current desires and that's why i am looking to be a data science consultant right exact apt to the point no blabbering around or beating around the bush right specific things very clear in your approach very structured and you say like these are the things why i want to become a data science consultant right moving forward okay so why when people ask about a company right so why bcg or something like that right so for example why bcg right so bcg is able to showcase individuality and diversity in workplace plus i see people from multiple walks of life working at bcg which really attracts me i love to learn from other people's expertise and experience and i believe bcg is best suited to provide me with such environment so this is one way of answering whenever people ask why this in this method you are trying to demonstrate like why you, like what all do you know about this company and why do you think it is a good fit right i am a very creative person and in addition to having functional expertise i know bcg encourages creative problem solving this i believe will be will prove to be a great asset to me and will motivate me to come up with unique creative and structured solutions to client problems right again you are aligning what the company stands for or what the company is promote and what you are or what your you know creative mindset thinks i believe the work will be challenging and i'm looking to undertake complex tasks which bcg is aptly suited for right this was one way another way is to you know go through the website of the company and try to pick certain things out of it and make sure for your experiences align with that you know whatever you found out so for example for why amazon whole foods so i went to the website and found out some things right so whole foods consider every team member as a leader so this is written on their website who contributes to the customer happiness I believe this reflects that Whole Foods really wants people to own their solutions which is very important to me because it gives an opportunity to lead as well as contribute to the vast intertwined nature of business problems that can come to a big organization like Whole Foods right website also mentions you know various aspects right so seek out finest natural and organic foods i will say that okay i have experience in supply chain and distribution and like i can really see this maintain quality standards i have experience with quality control uh whole foods also you know deals with landlords i have experience in real estate as a data scientist and that is why my experience is aligned with it so you see you are making them see that you are a good fit the complex opportunities these areas might lead to and being a person who will get opportunities to elegantly solve it so that the company can always be as aligned to its mission really excites me right so this is another way of answering these kind of questions okay so when people ask right so th there are some companies who ask like why this company over our competitors right so for example why bcg over other consultancies so while most of the consultants consultancies are focused on structure and story bcg has analytical focus which perfectly aligns with my interest and experiences in data science and electric analytics i truly believe in this so you see you try to demonstrate that what is the thing that sets whatever company that you are applying to apart from their um, competitors right and make them see that yes whatever bcg or that company that you are applying to stands for it you believe in that truly really, right and to do that you need to show that your your competitor is focused on this this and this you are focused on a b c and d right and i align with a b and d and my experience is aligned with that right and that is why i am choosing you over your competitors also at bcg partnerships with clients at all levels is crucial to make better decisions which i firmly believe in right so one or two points 
why you think this and what this company does better than uh, the competitor you just need to mention that and these are the two most important factors for me to consider bcg over others so you see like this is how we align it or how we answer these kind of questions so yeah in this video it was all uh, please share if you found this video useful i hope this video was useful uh, and you might got a good idea of how to you know prepare for behavioral rounds of these questions again it is one of the most in neglected part of data science preparation don't neglect it people think that they will be able to answer but just after watching the part one and two you might realize that actually it takes some amount of preparation to you know align your story with whatever the company or the job role is seeking for so make sure you do that and what whatever questions or what additional questions that were asked to you in the data science interviews let me know in the comment section if like a lot of people answer or you know put down a lot of other questions i will try to make a part three of this series as well including and like what will my answers be to those questions so yeah uh, let me know in the comment section and until then i will see you guys in the next video